What is up guys, HF Masters here, and today we are back with another LEGO Ninjago movie review, and this time it is on Garmadon's Volcano Layer. This set retails for $55 in the United States, and comes with 521 pieces. It also has 5 minifigures, and on the front it shows the Volcano Layer base. On the back of the box, it of course shows off the features that we will be going over in the review. Without further ado, let's open this setup. Garmadon's Volcano Layer All Complete is a very solid and nice build. There are three main sections of the Volcano Layer, one being a small little kind of construction area which includes a crane that is posable along with a small little feature of the crane being able to pick up a shark. And there's also another small little feature of knocking down the wall and this is of course indicated by the gear which you obviously just turn and it knocks down the wall. On the left side of the volcano layer there is a kind of like garment on tech area. There's a sign that says G-I-T. Now I have no clue what that stands for. I can take a guess that the G probably stands for Garmadon. However, I don't really know what that stands for. If you guys know in the comment section below, feel free to tell me. Uh, I'm always interested to know. And I've got to say, this section I really do like a lot because, first of all, we have this like mini build of the Piranha vehicle from Piranha Attack, which I think is really cool. And then there's of course, you know, a coffee machine because you gotta have that, gotta have those small details, which I do like along with just the desk in general. The desk, it's simple, but it does its job. And of course, the computer does use a lot of sticker pieces. However, I think it looks fine and I think it does its job. Uh, probably the coolest thing is actually the printed keyboard piece which you don't really see those often. Sadly, it is a 1x2 tile piece, so it is very small. However, it is still very neat to see that. In the bottom area, there is a small little shark drone, which I believe is just supposed to kind of attract the sharks so that Garmin can capture them, obviously to use for his uh, mecha machine. And lastly, there is the throne room, which has quite a few things going on. First of all, there is a fish tank which you can actually move the fish, which is something uh, kind of just like a small little thing that's, I guess, kind of cool. I mean, there's not really too much you can do with that. And there is a pot of tea along with a red button, which that's cool. I, I can't remember exactly um, what the red button was used for in the movie. However, I do think it would be possibly for firing out the uh, general, which we'll get into that a little bit later. But lastly, I do want to also mention, there are uh, just weapons all over the place in his throne room, along with what I believe to be a new pieces, which kind of represent like um, desks or tables, which is pretty cool and I, I do appreciate that. And of course, there is the top of the volcano layer, which of course has to have our favorite feature, the firing feature. And of course you just spin the gear, which isn't really too obvious at this angle. However, when you look at it from the back, it is a little more obvious, but it doesn't really matter too much. I think the function works fine. You just spin it and you can fire out the general and you can recreate that scene which, you know, pretty cool thing. I really like that. I think that feature works really well, and it is definitely the main feature of the set. Overall, I do have to say that this build is very solid, but let's go ahead and look at the minifigures now. The minifigures from left to right are General Number 1, Steve, Four Eyes, Zane, and Garmadon. Now before I go and just talk about these figures in general, I am going to go take a look at General Number 1, Steve, and Four Eyes. I'm not going to be taking a look at Zane or Garmadon because 
those are repeat figures there's not really anything new about them I'm sure you guys have already seen things about them so I'm just gonna skip those guys and just look at the new guys general number one is not exactly a, a new a minifigure for the Ninjago movie series because we have seen him in the collectible minifigure series however this version of him is different because he's obviously not all completely burnt up he hasn't been fired yet so that's kind of a cool thing we have here we just have him before he gets fired and then obviously after you use that play feature if you have the collectible minifigure version you could have you could like have him come back all burnt up which is just something kind of cool that they did with the collectible minifigure series Steve is a pretty cool minifigure. He is obviously working around the lab. You can see that with his lab coat. He does have a bit of a tie-dye shirt going on, and you can see that his hair and beard just completely covers up his face. Sadly, on the back, there's not really too much printing. There is one little thing, but other than that, not really too much. And then when you take off the hair and beard piece, you actually can see he has glasses. And for some reason, he does kind of remind me of Mike from Brick Vault. I don't know, I'm just kind of getting that vibe. Comment below if you're actually getting that vibe too. And of course, he actually has another face on the back, which is pretty cool. Lastly, we have four eyes. And you really can't tell what's going on here. I mean, I will say I do like this figure. I think he's pretty cool. He's pretty unique. And there's not really too much happening here. We did get a version of him in the collectible minifigure series. I'm not exactly too sure if this is exactly the same or not. However, um, I'll, I'll figure it out later. Overall, I have to say, I really do like the volcano layer. Seeing this at first, I was thinking, oh, this set's not gonna be too good. $55, not exactly the best piece count for a Ninjago movie set. However, after building this set, I have kind of just completely changed my mind on that. The set has a lot of play features. And not only that, but it does have a lot of just kind of cool details happening. Overall, I mean, this set is very cool. It's really good for play value. You have all sorts of functions. The detailing is pretty good. And in general, it's just an iconic set and really just fits in really well. I think they did a good job. I do think it is a little bit small, even, you know, even though it uses quite a few big, larger pieces to kind of add some beef to it. I, I personally would have liked to have seen something more bigger, something more, you know, around the $100 range. However, you know, $55 for this set, that's, that's a bit of, you know, like half of it. And that does make this set more affordable for, you know, kids that don't exactly have just like a ton of money laying around. Because not everyone has a hundred dollars to spend on sets. So having it at this lower price does make it more affordable. And I think because of that, this set in general just is really good. Overall, I would say I would definitely recommend this set. Just there's so much it has to offer. It's reasonably priced I, I kind of wish they would have made it bigger however I'm not really gonna complain it doesn't kind of like lose the, the uh, sets value at all in fact it does make this set a little better because it does make it easier for people to get and it is quite an iconic set so overall that's really all I have to say about this set comment below about what you guys think of this set and until next time this is HF Masters saying goodbye